Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan. He's a corgi, and we're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And it's our Labor Day edition. Notice we're not working very hard today. Tristan's very limp and sleepy. And we are at the beach in beautiful Provincetown, Massachusetts. And I wanted to be by the water today because Labor Day, as much as it's a holiday for many people, signaling barbecues and fun times with their family and celebrating the summer, Labor Day is an important day for many dog owners because after Labor Day, we are allowed to bring our pets to many beaches up and down the east and west coast. And taking your dog to the beach is an important part of your dog's life. And whether it be at a lake or a pond in your backyard or a bigger lake that's a bit of a drive or literally to the ocean, it can be a wonderful experience to bring your dog to the beach. Like humans, dogs have emotional needs and their needs are fed by being near the water and being near the ocean. Dogs love the beach. They love to run and play. And many dogs, like mine, who might be a little bit less than friendly with certain other dogs, he is a lot better behaved at the beach. He is able to run off leash with the other dogs. And even after Labor Day, not every dog lets you, or every beach lets you have your dog off leash. But we love being off leash at the beach because Tristan can mingle with other dogs and get good socialization. It's a great thing to do with. Um, a younger dog, not necessarily a tiny puppy because he can be intimidated by the crowd and not all dogs are great with puppies. But being able to run and swim through the water is an important part of your dog's life and his health and his wellness experience. So bringing your dog to the beach is a great thing to do with your dog. The ions at the beach, just as they do with people, create a better balance of the body systems and it is just a wonderful experience to breathe the beach air it's a perfect mixture of moisture and dryness and the, the salt really helps your sinuses prepare you for the winter of you know potential sinus issues so celebrate labor day by thinking about a time to bring your dog to the beach because so many beaches do allow dogs after labor day i know all along the coast of connecticut dogs are allowed off leash on certain beaches when it's after labor day and on other beaches they have to be on a leash and it's still a great time to go to the beach. Parking is easier. You can still roll up your pants and wade in the water and even the Northeast throughout much of September and early October. And that's the kind of weather we've been having here this weekend. Um, and it's beautiful sunshine in the fall at the beach. And your dog can really improve some of the health of his legs, his tendons, running on the beach and his muscles. So think about bringing your dog to the beach. You love it, he'll love it. Bring a little picnic. Don't forget to include some water for him and some snacks and a blanket and perhaps some towels. Um, not too much if you're walking along the beach, but it's a great opportunity for you and your dog to get out and experience one of the most wonderful things we have to offer them, which is a trip to the beach. So this has been Sally Morgan and Tristan Corgi, and we're at the beach here in Provincetown, Mass. And we have a few little reminders for you. Actually, we will be back here in three weeks for Pet Weekend. They have a fun dog show. It's all to raise money for the shelter here, which thankfully mostly houses cats. They have very few lost dogs in Provincetown. And, you know, all the way up here at the tip of the beach, that's a good thing. Um, and at the tip of the country, really, we're sticking way out into the sea. But there are many kitties here that get happy homes and the donations made during that pet weekend really help those kitties and support the rescue efforts to find homes for those kitties. So we will be back here for pet weekend. And also we'd like to remind you that we do have that upcoming craniosacral therapy class um, at Monkey's House in New Jersey where we will be working directly with the senior dogs there. If you have any interest in that class, please contact me through my website or my email which is Sally Morgan PT at gmail.com. That's like Sally Morgan Physical Therapist, Sally Morgan PT at gmail.com. And we will also um, be offering the wonderful mugs with corgis on them on our website that I have been using for many years. And I will have pictures of those coming up later this week. And what else do we have going on, Tristan? And there's a tea touch class for horses with Linda herself in Virginia at the end of October. And then as time evolves and the expos get up and running, we'll have lots of updates about um, 
speaking engagements at expos and opportunities for you to come to our booth and meet me and Tristan and talk about your pet's health and wellness. And of course, as always, we are located next to my sister, Dr. Judy Morgan. So those are some of the things we have going on. If you haven't checked it out yet, please go to Amazon and look at my book, Dances of the Heart, Connecting with the Animals by Sally Morgan. Um, it is on Amazon, and if you've been enjoying these Facebook Lives, you might want to check that out as well. There's a wonderful bookstore here in Provincetown that has been selling my book, and it's a great summer read. So they've sold quite a few. I'm pretty happy with the results here. And in fact, I met a friend of mine last night outside of a place where I was dancing, and she was a colleague during physical therapy school. And lo and behold, I do have a picture of her and Winston in physical therapy school in my book, and she had not seen it. So she was going down to that store to pick up a copy today. So if you haven't checked it out, do look at my book, Dances of the Heart, Connecting with Animals, on Amazon.com. It's also available on my website, www.sallymorganpt.com, and on my sister's, www.drjudymorgan.com. So thanks for joining us, and really think about bringing your dog to the beach. It is so beautiful here. The tide is up and still coming in, um, so we can't run too much on the beach. Plus, Tristan's had a bath. He is finally fresh and fluffy and clean after having all kinds of stuff on him from the beach runs in July. And uh, just another reminder, even if it is in the colder months and you bring your dog to the beach, make sure to at least rinse him off, if not soap him off, after he's at the beach. There's all kinds of things. If you have a furrier dog that live in the water here that can find a home on your dog's skin and create an infection. So really important not just to wipe your dog off after he's been at the ocean or maybe one of the Great Lakes and some ponds, but make sure you rinse him and soap him off as well and get up under his armpits and all around his back end. Even if you have a tall leggy dog, sometimes even sand in a furrier dog can get trapped up there and create some skin irritations. So make sure you keep your dog clean just like you after the beach but don't forget to enjoy the beach with your pet. So this has been Sally Morgan and Tristan Corgi, and we're here at the beach to remind you to bring your dog to the beach. And in fact, when I had a cat, I brought her to the beach and we took quite a few beach walks, so on a leash and a harness. So think about that as well. And we'll be back with you on Thursday morning for Conversations with a Corgi, where we'll continue our discussion of tuning forks. And for Tuesday and Wednesday, I'll be working as an educator, so I won't be available in the morning to do our conversations with a corgi. Tristan can't wait to get a little more running in before we have to start moving out of our hotel room and going into town for the day. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Check out the beach. It's here and it's beautiful and your dog will love you for it. Thanks for joining us.